What is going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number 15 of our Texas Rangers franchise. And in today's episode, we have the Lone Star Series going on. The Rangers against the Astros. We're taking on Forrest Whitley, who has over an 8-plus ERA. He's got a ton of control issues so far this season. And in this episode, we are looking to capitalize on the strikes that he does throw us because they are few and far between. Take advantage of him. I mean, look at those balls right there. Down low, a lot of off-speed and, and movement type of pitches against Elvis Andrews. Worked him full right there before that ground out to Bregman. 16 pitches in the first inning. So we did a good job of working the count against Whitley, and I think that's really why he's struggling so far this season. A lot of, a lot of balls, the strikes that he does throw, they're like right there. So he's getting taken advantage of. Uh, big time, but we are going to be countering with Drew Smiley. He's actually pitching pretty decently. I didn't want to bring him back, but again, the CPU uh, must have signed him on auto. I don't know why that happened, but it did. So he's here, and you know he's taking up a roster spot. But we'll, we'll hopefully keep him pitching well, and then maybe he's going to be trade bait eventually in uh, this 2020 season. So, guys, the Lone Star series actually being held in real life. Advantage Rangers, 111 to 78 losses. 111 wins to 78 losses over the Astros. But obviously the Astros being the better team of the two in real life. So far in this season, in 2020, year number two of our franchise, both these teams are relatively equal. You know, we're sitting here about second and third place and only a game back. So this is a big game for us. And we see here already that the Astros sort of manufactured this run Carlos Correa getting in with an RBI double. Here's Alex Bregman here with Correa on second, and he's going to try to do the same thing by hitting out there in that right center field gap, but Mazzara is going to get there, and he's going to get the final out of the bottom of the first. And look at this shot. Look at this absolute missile by Joey Gallo, guys. His sixth on the season, and Whitley's like, damn it. But that's a huge shot, guys. It got out of there in a hurry. It's probably the fastest home run I've ever seen get out of the ballpark and MLB the show. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one to have experienced that. Let me know in the comments section, guys. Have you seen a, a faster home run? Let me know. Because that was the quickest thing I've ever seen, honestly. So that 99 power is working in full effect for Joey Gallo here. So here's Kyder Falefa. With 35 pitches on Whitley, we're looking to do some damage. And look at this. He's going to go the other way. Josh Reddick, a little off balance here, but he does cut it off. But we will score that run as Mazzara gets in safely. The Rangers take the lead here in the top of the second. It's going to be 2-1. to one. Got runners on the corners now, and they're already going out to talk to Whitley. And obviously with his struggles during the year and looking like he's going to have some struggles being efficient in this game here it's probably better to talk to him early than later on right so here's evan gaddis lining a base hit off of the scoreboard he's going to get in for a double a little bit later on here's jake marisnik and he is going to pop up to third baseman josh fuentes is going to make the play and we are out of the inning so smiley still doing a good job here in his start top of the fourth inning here's another base hit for mazara it's actually going to be his second base hit of the game, both going the opposite way to left field. So it's a really good thing for him. You now he's hitting about that 270 mark, but I, I want to I want to see him like come up big and, and be that two that 290, maybe even crazily be a 300 hitter at some point during his career. So we do get a jo Josh Fuentes double here that's going to go into the corner. Ronald Guzman going to get a walk, and this is crazy already because. We've got 72 pitches on Whitley in the fourth inning. So, again, we talked about his efficiency and how many balls that he throws and the strikes that he does give you. you got to take advantage of it, and Connor Falefa does as we get a sacrifice fly. Going to score that run. Runners on first and second. And, oh, oh, no, no, Guzman, go. Go to second. Uh, he got, well, you can't blame him. I mean, he got caught in no man's land right there, that line drive. He thought Guriel had caught it on that line drive. He didn't. And being as slow as he is, you know, that's not going to work out. So there you go. Delano De Shields, though, does get a stolen base. So we do move that runner up. We got runners on second and third. And here's a ground ball. And look at Altuve making that fine, fine play 
Guys, what a move right there to get Odor. And now we're going to go a little bit later on to the top of the fifth. And look at this. Joey Gallo going to go what, guys? What's he going to do? He's going to go boosh. A big-time shot. Solo home run. His second of the game and his seventh on the season. And you know what? Again, like we talked about, take advantage of the strikes that he does give you. That's his 89th pitch in the game. I mean, we're in the we're in the fifth inning right now. It's like, what's going on with Whitley? But speaking of what's going on, like what's going on with Drew Smiley? He's making me regret wanting to let him go. He struck out the side. Let's go to the bottom of the sixth inning, a little bit later here, and what a play by Mazzara in right field to get that line drive. And when we take a look here at the pitch count by inning, look at how efficient Drew Smiley's been. He doesn't have a lot of strikeouts today. Three strikeouts coming in that last inning was the majority of what he'd been doing all game long. So he had a one strikeout before that. That'd be his fourth so far. And then look at this. In the bottom of the seventh, Mazzara can't handle that line drive. And I, that sucks because we were really on a good run there with Smiley. And you know what? You know, crazy things have happened, right? We get Josh Reddick up and... You know, a home run is going to make it 4-3. to three. So you want to be careful here. We do be careful because we get a little pop-up slash fly-out to Elvis Andrews there at shortstop right, right ahead of Joey Gallo here. And then now going into the bottom of the eighth inning with two down. Ugh, we give up a double down the line to Gene Segura. So here's Michael Brantley, 83 pitches in, and, oh, we get a little fly ball to... Joey Gallo, but he's too slow. He's too slow out there. He can't get it. I was thinking about diving. I was thinking about diving, but again, just let it drop. So it's going to be 4-2. to two. The Astros are coming back with that Michael Brantley RBI double. Jose Altuve, a big pitch right here. 0-1, two down, a little ground ball back to Smiley. He's going to make a good throw, a solid throw, and we are going to go get out of this inning. We need some insurance here in the top of the ninth, though. We want to make sure that if even if Jose Leclerc does come up, he's not going to give up the lead. But Guzman's going to do his best to drive this baseball out into gap somewhere, but Marisnik's going to track it down. Gets it at the warning track. Here's a base hit for DeShields right past Jose Altuve. Really good hit right there, too. A lot of, a lot of power behind that swing on that line drive. So we do have DeShields here at first base, two down, and Odor is up, and he's going to send a long fly ball out to deep center, almost where Guzman was at. And Marisnik is going to run this down again. And we're actually going to be keeping Drew Smiley out there to finish the ninth inning against this meat of the order. Correa, Bregman, and Guriel. Crazy, right? Well, he's only got 88 pitches right now. So it's like he's still he's still got some juice left. And we get a good play out there by Mazzara. Here is Bregman going to strike out on a cut fastball. A really good pitch by Smiley. And then here is Guriel. And he's going to get a base hit. So now things are getting a little sticky, right? 92 pitches. His energy is really low. Do you bring in Jose Leclerc against Josh Reddick, the lefty? Or do you go with the lefty against the lefty here? And if you give up a home run, it's tied. But at least you at least you went down with the guy that had been giving you a good inning and a good game. Inning after inning after inning, right? So we're sticking with Smiley here. 0-1 count on Reddick. He hit that foul ball a little bit early at the same spot. And Fuentes is going to make a great play. Nice reaction, right? Over to get in that foul territory for the final out of the game. And the Astros go down, literally swinging, <laughs> to the Texas Rangers here on the road. Yeah, Drew Smiley with a complete game, two earned runs performance. I am very, very impressed with Drew Smiley right now. Keep going, man. Keep performing well because we're going to trade you. We're going to trade you away. Keep playing well. Looking at the box score, we did it pretty decently as far as hitting goes. Ten hits, four runs. I would still like to see a little bit more uh, bang for our buck there. We had those ten hits. I, I'd really like to see that, that run production get to about six maybe instead of four. I mean, you'll you'll take a win, right? But, again, I, I, I want more efficiency in our in our offensive production, you know, not wasting those hits when we do get on base. Taking a look at the roster here, you guys can see kind of a little bit of a roster update, stat, uh, statistics update. I'm only showing you guys this because I want to know what you guys are thinking as far as draft goes. Now, I was brought up with the proposition that 
once we draft players this season, I'm going to rename them to subscriber-based creative players, which which I'm cool with, which I'm fine with. So I'm opening the door for that. I think what I think what we'll do for the like as a rule is our first round draft pick will not be eligible for, to be renamed. So we'll we'll go with that because I, I think that I want to keep it realistic in the sense that you know we're we're scouting a guy, we're treating it as if he's a if he's a blue chip prospect like that's the guy right. I don't want to change his name for for something uh, created, but I'm I'm leaving the door open. I think that that would be fun to do. So. What do you guys think that we need to address? Do you guys think we need to address third base? I mean, we do have Tyler Frank down here. He's 22, 58 overall. He's not He's not really changing his his overall rating, though. He's still a 58 despite playing really well. Lyle Riley is the f- future shortstop slash second baseman of the future. I, I hope Odor is going to be able to stay and he's going to be worth the money eventually. But we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, center field, outfield. I don't think that maybe we need a guy. I mean, we've got Cespedes down there. We've got Tavares. Palma can play. Calhoun down here at a 63, which kind of sucks. I hope I hope that he can get uh, get a little bit better. He's hitting 290. He can play second base and left. So I mean, he's still got some eligibility elsewhere other than right field. He could be a good D, a designated hitter, a DH, once uh, Nelson Cruz is gone. So what do you guys think we need to do? I mean, here's some blue chip prospects just real quick. Just taking a look at some guys here. Steven Young from South Korea seems like a pretty decent player. We could have, There's a lot of second basemen that we could address. Brad McLeod can play shortstop as well. Um, so we could kind of focus on that uh, that one-two tandem here between maybe like Torres or McLeod with Odor or Lyle Riley, like things like that we could consider. We could consider a catcher with Oliver Soleri. Look at those defensive numbers, though, guys. And he's a good hitter, too. Like, maybe we might want to consider uh, Solari. I know that we've just traded for Mabry's Valoria. We've got Kiner Falefa, who's playing decently. Jose Trevino is kind of a little bit older of a player. Seems to be more like a backup type of guy. So catcher, I mean, we, we could address it. We could address it, but it's not like an immediate pressing need. And I'm not sure that even looking at our entire roster – for our organization, we don't really have a lot of pressing needs as it is right now. So I'm pretty much looking at this like maybe we just take the best player available. And take a look at this. Once we simulate a little bit further, we do end up getting first place right now. So this is the next episode you guys are going to see for episode number 16. is going to be Casey Mize against Shelby Miller, Tigers against the Rangers. 16 and 21 Tigers against 17 and 19 Texas Rangers. So I'll see you guys on Sunday, as always. Peace.